This is a quick overview of the circle breathing system. Please like and subscribe. The circle system was first used in 1926. It differs in complexity from the previous breathing systems by the presence of a CO2 absorber and unidirectional valves. It remains the most clinically relevant breathing system in the developed world. It is classed as a closed system when the APL valve is fully closed and semi-closed when the APL valve is partially open. The aim of the circle system is to maintain physiological function whilst delivering low flow anaesthesia and removing waste gases. There are multiple essential requirements for the use of the circle system. Basic ones include the following. You must at least match the basal oxygen requirement for the patient, which is classically 240 mils per minute in an adult. You must have accurate gas monitoring. At the start of the use of the circle system, you should consider using high fresh gas flow to enable sufficient denitrogenation of the circuit, thus preventing delivery of a hypoxic gas mixture. Set of factors, the relief valve must not be placed between the patient and the inspiratory unidirectional valve. There's multiple advantages and disadvantages to the circle system. The main advantage is the use of low flow anaesthesia, reducing volatile use and thus greenhouse gas effect and cost, in addition to humidification and reduced dead space. However, the system is difficult to clean and difficult to move. It requires gas monitoring, there's poor compensation to leaks within the system, and it's a high resistance system to the presence of valves and soda lime. Toxic compounds can be produced, compound A in the presence of sevoflurane and carbon monoxide for desniso. Nitrogen concentrations can build up in the presence of low flow anaesthesia, which risks the delivery of hypoxic gas mixture to the patient. There are six key components in the system. A fresh gas flow, which contains a selection of gases, oxygen, air, nitrous, and a volatile agent. A pressure relief valve and an APL valve. An APL valve is a one-way adjustable spring-loaded valve to generate pressure within the system. Unidirectional flow valves and a bag. The bag acts as a reservoir for fresh gas flow. You can observe breathing, and as the radius increases, the pressure decreases. And finally, a CO2 absorber which can contain commonly soda lime, bower lime, and bazorb. The exact position of most but not all components can vary. For efficient use of the system, the relief valve should be positioned in the expiratory limb and the fresh gas flow should enter the system proximal to the inspiratory unidirectional valve. During the onset of use, high fresh gas flow is recommended to increase oxygen and volatile agent uptake. If we look at the diagram, you have fresh gas flow input. The patient is positioned between two unidirectional valves. Following the patient, there's a bag to squeeze to allow observation and intermittent positive pressure ventilation in the APL valve, and a relief valve in the event the pressure within the system is too great, which can result in lung trauma. The CO2 removal agent will remove CO2 from the circuit to enable the use of low flow anesthesia. Soda lime is a white greyish coloured crystalline solid and has two key features. It reacts with carbon dioxide and thus removes CO2 from the circuit and also provides an element of humidification of the system. It is presented as granules of 4 to 8 mesh. The granules will pass through a mesh which is 4 holes per square inch but not 8. It is composed mainly of calcium hydroxide 97% but also sodium hydroxide 3%. The granules are held together with silica and contains a dye that changes colour when the soda lime reaches its carbon dioxide absorbing capacity. The reaction is shown below, so CO2 plus calcium hydroxide is equal to calcium carbonate plus water.